Hello everyone, I'm Corey from Aquarium Co-op and today I'm talking about sponge filters. I love them so much, so much so we made our own. I wanna show you guys how to use one optimally. You would think it's such a simple device, how can you make it optimal? Well, you know, making cereal is so easy, but if you use 10 parts milk, one part cereal, you just get kind of sugary milk. So there is some nuances here that I wanna talk about. First will be kind of design stuff and then we'll go from there. So this is, this was my previous favorite sponge filter. And then this is the one we made, right? So similar, some things I did, I made it green. I made it much heavier so it always sinks. If you've ever used a sponge filter before, you might be used to. I put it in and then the next day it was floating, you know, and then I had to sink it again. And, and I don't like that. So I liked it to sink right away. Now, a lot of them might come with much more fine foam than these even, which I'm not a fan of the super fine ones. We don't even sell them. Uh, that doesn't mean that you don't like them. It just, I don't like them. We don't sell them. You can get them somewhere else. But if you like a, a coarse one, let me tell you why you might. You can go much longer periods without them clogging up, right? And in general, they're going to sink right away. And in general, they're easy to clean, right? And so I like to remove debris from with maybe a hang on back, gravel vacuuming, water changes, that kind of stuff. And this will collect debris as well. Those fine ones, if you're not cleaning them every week, they're actually starting to lose some of their capacity. The other problem I don't like is most sponge filters out there don't come with the ability to put an air stone in them. This one did. That's why I had used it for many, many years. And ours does as well. So the inside of it actually, when you look at it, will be hollow because there's no center stem pipe where normally you'd attach the air and it does that and it gets clogged up with calcium over time and it's a problem. Instead, you have this bullseye at the top and we're gonna, we're gonna look at the sponge filter without the sponge on it for a lot of this video. And so you connect your airline up here, which by the way, we have the Aquarium Co-op airline tubing. It's super pliable and awesome. Read the reviews, don't take my word for it. But we want to attach an air stone in here because an air stone, that changes the bubble size and all of that. This is the correct way to do it. There's also incorrect ways. The correct way is use an air stone. I happen to really love the Never Clog Zis Air Stones. A very short piece of tubing. And I like to twist it on a little bit tighter so I get finer bubbles. All you're going to do is attach that to the underside nipple right there. And you want to make sure it's relatively straight. If it's sitting off to the side, the bubbles are going to come out to the side. So you want it to sit relatively straight, get it on there real well. And we're going to put that back in. Now you can see that the sponge or the, you know, here's the sponge filter. It sits right at the top and you're going to get some good flow coming out of it. And that's going to lead you to success. Now, what you don't want to do is put a real long piece of tubing in there because tubing typically tends to bend a little bit, right? And when you put that down in there, now it goes off to the side. You are going to get bubbles out the side of your filter. And you might say, but Corey, isn't it the lower the air goes, the better uplift you're going to go? Kind of. This gets real science nerdy here, so I'm going to gloss over it, and you're going to have to take my word for it a little bit. But the longer the air travels, the more chance it has for two bubbles to come together and make a bigger bubble. And as those bubbles get bigger, they're not as efficient. They end up going glug, 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 glug. So if you get lots of small bubbles all traveling relatively uniform, the lift is massive. So we've got a filter that's been running for a while here. It's got some debris on it. And it's running, in my opinion, at full capacity. This brand new one I just put in a couple seconds ago is running at over capacity. If you can see, there's lots of big bubbles. So what's happening there is there's so many bubbles coming out of the tube that they're globbing up and making bigger bubbles. If we look at the top of the aquarium, you can see it's really boiling and loud. Kind of that glug, 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 glug. Whereas over here, we don't have that. We have a nice steady flow and movement. So I'm going to turn the air down. So now I've turned the air down. We have a more uniform flow. You see how the bubbles aren't collecting as big glugs anymore? That is now an optimal air flow. This would be considered very heavy airflow with lots of suction, which you might not want if you had a ton of baby fish or something like that. You can definitely turn it down. I will show that next. This would be turned down flow that would be better for babies and not hearing it as much. You can see the surface agitation very high. This is at a full flow sponge filter. 
And this is at a lower flow sponge filter. And that's what we focused on here is being able to use not a lot of air to get really good lift. So much so that things like our USB nano air pump that runs virtually silent doesn't even put out that much air, runs a sponge filter really well. And that's kind of the flow I actually prefer, unless you happen to have 600 Rummy Nose Tetras going through a quarantine tank, in which case I do ramp it up. I ramp this one up for this video, but normally they're running more something like this, even less than what you see in my turndown version. So we focused on how can we get you the most lift for the least amount of air so that you would be able to not have to run as much electricity, not to buy as big of air pumps and all of that, instead of just not optimizing and going, well, they can buy a bigger air pump if they want more lift. They can do this if they want more lift, that kind of stuff. We're gonna go over some of the differences here with having an air stone versus not having an air stone. So there's an air stone, the Neverclog air stone installed on these. So that's why you're getting these fine bubbles. Down low here, there is no air stone installed. So you're getting that glug, 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 glug. And there's a big difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the air stone out of this one so that you can see, I won't change the airflow or anything like that, just see what a difference having an air stone in a sponge filter makes. So without changing the airflow at all, you now get this more kind of glug, 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 glug. And typically what we would find is as a hobbyist, we would turn this up. We go, ah, oh, that's not enough flow. So you turn it up. So you end up using more air to do the same job because you don't have an air stone. And because it's going glug, 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 that's gonna be louder and not as efficient as something like that. So let's go ahead and turn it up and where we would actually keep it as a hobbyist, which would be more like something like that probably because people tend to really want to get that lift. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear that on camera, but we definitely have glug, 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 glug going on compared to this. So the other portion is an uplift tube. Yes, an uplift tube does help keep the bubbles contained. It would be installed like this. That works well. They go up, you get your lift, right? You can optimize if you want, if you just want to be, I like to run more air than anyone's ever needed, Corey. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> Maybe you want to run the long version. You're like, I, I don't care what he says. I want to do it. And you want to run world's biggest air pump. You can get another one of these tubes from another sponge filter. You could cut this one in half. You could um, make a little piece of PVC, but all you have to do is you put this on the underside. Now, all the air that would come out stays in this tube. So you could just put a crazy amount of air. Now, why you would want to, I don't know. I don't like it to sound like uh, I'm in a jacuzzi when I walk into a room with a fish tank. I don't want to hear it. Like that's, I'm not into that, but maybe you've got a reason. Maybe you've got a reactor or something. You're doing something crazy that most people don't do. You would have it inside like this and it could handle that. That's your own prerogative. Also, maybe if you had to have the sponge filter installed on its side, which I don't know why you would. Maybe you got an Oscar that just loves to wing this thing around your tank, right? And it's pretty heavy because we made it, hopefully the Oscar can't do that, but maybe he likes to hit it and you're tired of it coming out the side. That's another way you could help prevent that issue, but I do believe the best way to use it is to keep that shorter installed air stone, keep this on top. You don't have to run this by the way. We intentionally made this a little more narrow so less plecos and snails get into it. And there you go. All right, so now I have a sponge filter that in my opinion is not set up optimally and correctly. One of the signs would be, well, it's not level. So that's one clue, but neither is that one. That one's working okay, okay. Uh, but we have bubbles coming out of the top side of the sponge. That's not really optimal. We're using extra air. And yes, that does help a tiny bit, but it's the least amount. And we're pumping more air on this side than this side to accomplish those results. It comes down to the way in which you have the length of tubing in here. It needs to be very short. And uh, the other thing also to know is with the Neverclog Airstone, you choose how fine you want the bubbles. It, this right now is set to basically how it would come out of the package and typically I tighten it up so we get a little bit tighter bubble like that. We're gonna go through each one of these so we can see the changes we're making. And the first one is we wanna fix the bubbles coming out of the top side of the filter there that aren't going through the tube. And to do that, we do it by making sure that the tube inside is straight and that it's not super long. When it's super long, if the air's way down here, it has a chance to bloop out the side. 
And so we want that nice flow. We want to get a good suction through the sides of that sponge and straight up through the center. This is how long the piece of tubing inside was, which is much longer than we recommend on the package and everything. I'm going to shorten it up and give you some insight to that. Before I do that, I'm going to tighten this up so you can see the different size and bubbles. So we did not change the airflow at all. We only tightened the discs that are in the air stone so that it would have a finer flow, which is a good thing because the more uniform it is, the more water will actually move. So now I'm going to replace it with a shorter piece of airline tubing on the inside. So now we've got the short piece installed and you can see it's basically just as long to connect that air stone to the nipple on the underside as you could be. And you see that, you know, short of turning it sideways, the air already wants to go up through, through the sponge. So we're going to install it now and then we'll adjust flow if we need to. So we did not move the sponge filter at all. It's still as much off kilter as it used to be. And you can see here, we're getting all the flow through the tube. Nothing's coming out the sides. And we've got quite a bit coming out the top there. That's a lot of flow, more than what I'd normally run. There is extreme cases where if you just turn an insane amount of air through here, no matter what you do, it's gonna come out the sides. And I'll show, I'll try to show you that. I hope I have enough air to do that. It takes a lot, but we'll try that as well. Well, I'm maxing out the amount of air I can put through this, but I, I know I've been able to do it in testing before where I use just an insane amount of air. And I wanna show you guys how you could prevent that problem. If you really just said, Corey, I gotta lift a mountain with this airlift way more than any normal person ever would need to, assuming the correct installation, there actually is a fix for that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that ready. All right, so I actually had to turn the filter on its side this much with that much flow to get some bubbles to come out with it being installed correctly. So let's say that's just the way it had to be installed. And you go, Corey, I need a workaround. There, I just cannot live with this happening. The good news is you can put this piece of tube right here. You can cut it. You could buy another one, not, not really from us, but other another piece of tubing you're going to put on the inside. So that way you could... Uh, you need to give a little bit of a gap so that the air, because it's going to be rushing out, right? It needs to stay confined so it can go straight up. And we're going to show that here right now. All right, so now you can see we put it on the bottom. Now you can see it probably wouldn't have to be that long, but it contains all the bubbles. And no matter what way you really turn it, it's going to contain all the bubbles. Yes, putting a ton of air through like that makes it loud. But when you install it, it would allow you to do... In there, there we go. It'll allow you to do just, you know, you could put a blower on the end of that thing and it'll take basically any amount of air. I'm sure there's a limitation. Someone's going to go, hey, it wouldn't handle a wind turbine on a plane. Okay, yes, there is a limitation there. But for any practical purpose in your aquarium, it can take an insane amount of air. Yes, do you lose a little bit of the lift? Yes, because you don't have the top tube, but it's not that critical. Most times I don't run the top tubes anyway. And then down below, you're going, wait, you put a tube in that long. Is it only going to suck down here? Yes. So that's why you would cut that tube just to be as long enough as you need it if you're using it in this critical case. We've designed a filter basically that can take any amount of air you want to throw at it. I don't recommend you throw too much at it because you're wasting resources and you're going to have a loud aquarium and that kind of stuff where you can go with something more moderate. This is, in my opinion, as fast as you want to run one in actuality. Or you can run one more mild if you're filming or it's in a bedroom or something like that. And this works really well too. And what I would like to show you is, so you can see the crud that's on this filter. It's picking stuff up, right? This, and I didn't change the flow. That flow has always been that way. This flow has always been this way. If we come over here, this is picking stuff up with just that much flow. So it's mostly, it's not whether it will or will not pick up flow. It's from how far away will it suck stuff over here over time? That's really the big difference. And most people, they tend to put way too big of sponge filters in their tanks anyway. I do recommend running it normal, never clog air stone by this, with a, an air valve so you can control how much air, and running it more moderate than Captain Insano levels. You're gonna get a lot more quiet, you're gonna get a lot more even flow. This flow, even though there's more air, and I, I'm not gonna set this test up, but even though there's more air going through here, if you were to set the test on how much water is being moved, this one's actually moving more water because it's 
it's uniform. It's got constant lift. This is more like jerky. So every time it jerks, it goes up and down for the water. This is a nice pattern upflow. So even though visually it'll look like it's doing more, it's actually doing less. And you can see it happening at the top. You see all these bubbles at the top here? They go to the top and they get released. It's so turbulent over here, you can see the bubbles get pushed back down. When the, when the big glug breaks, it goes kapush, kapush, so much that it causes that backdraft. And that's why you don't get as good of lift, even though you're going, I use three times as much air. Of course it's better. It's one of those things of like, this is just how flow works and this is the recommendation. So I hope this is putting uh, to rest like a lot of, I don't understand why mine doesn't work like theirs or something's going wrong. It's the short tubing is key. The right amount of air is key. And, you know, everything's kind of made to a recipe. And the recipe is short amount of airline tubing. Use an air stone and keep it relatively level. And you'll have a great trouble-free experience for many, many years to come. You can see there's lots of variations on ways to tune your sponge filter. Your optimal goal, in my opinion, is to get it so that you're getting good lift. It's collecting debris and you service it at... Uh, a rate that will make sense for you. If you do water changes once a month, service it once a month. If you're doing water changes once a week, service it once a week. I like to use it in outdoor ponds. I like to use it in very big aquariums. Uh, I should say that these ones are made for 20 gallons right here, but I use two of them in 125 gallon with 600 Romeo's Tetras and they thrive. We didn't want to play the game of like, let's over promise and under deliver. Instead, we'll under promise and over deliver. These are my favorite size. They're a lot easier when it comes to cleaning. And I'll, I'll touch on that while we're here. I like the fact that you can fit your hand around it. The bigger ones, it gets hard and you'll start getting carpal tunnel trying to clean it. So when you do clean it, I wish I had a bag around, but you want a Ziploc bag or an old fish bag. This is now bubbling in your aquarium. You bring that bag in and you come up under the bottom and you grab it. Then you lift this whole thing out with the water. It's going to start having brown poopy water and everything. You lift that out of there and then you're going to hold the bag and take it apart. Usually I just wiggle this and this comes off and this is floating in the bag now. Then I just reach in the bag and I grab this part out and then I remove this part out. Now I got a bag of poopy water. I squeeze this a few times, pour that water out on your favorite house plant, then get some more water out of your aquarium, clean it in there till it basically is almost clean. It's never gonna be 100% clean because it's really hard because there's so much poop in there, but it should be like that water is pretty darn clean. Then you go ahead and you put it back together and you put it back in and now you drop that in your aquarium and you go, hey, some more stuff came off. That's fine. In an hour or two, it'll have collected that little bit that was left. You know, it's like when you sweep something up and no matter how many times you sweep it, there's like that little fine dust left. That's what happens in your aquarium. No matter how, many, how long you squeeze, you can do hours. You're going to put it back in. Like, stuff still came out. It'll collect it. No problem. The goal is to get 99% of it out. Leave that 1%. It's no problem at all and uh, just do that regularly and you won't have a problem and it's super easy if you just pull this thing out without with a bag it's just going to release everything back into the water so then you'll have to go oh that's right he said use a bag or a or a pitcher or a bowl something to catch the crud as you're lifting out of the water because as it comes out of the water all the debris is going to follow the water and that's down below easy to clean should be quick i love it because there's really no parts to break it runs just on air it can you know if you're using our usb air pump you can run on a battery backup if you have one of those and a power outage it really makes it easy and you can move with them having cycled sponge filter you can start up new tanks quarantine tanks and all that and the the, the biggest downfall to a sponge filter is that they take up space and they're a little bit ugly. We improved the aesthetics a little bit by making it green and blending it with green plants. We've made it so that you don't have to use as much air so it's not as loud. So we've gotten rid of most of the, the downfall and left all the benefits. And that was our goal is, you know, there's no perfect product out there, but we could push it a little bit towards that. And that's what we've done. So I hope you go and buy some. If you like using sponge filters, give ours a try. Um, if you love only fine sponge filters, well, I'm sorry for that. But if you haven't tried a coarse one yet, I recommend you do because once I was able to do that, I never went back. It was, and most, I would say most breeders fall in love with them, but you know, not, not every piece of candy is made for everyone. You know, there's different sides to choose. So, all right. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.